Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to do a little bit of a recap of the luxury items that I am so glad I bought with me for my first ever winter European vacation and the luxury items that I kind of regret bringing with me. I have had a few questions from people on whether or not the items that I brought were, were good, were cold, like were warm enough, were held up enough, like the bags I brought, the shoes I bought. I hope this video is useful to you, especially if like me, you live in a, a warm climate and you're maybe traveling or you plan to travel to somewhere uh, for like a, a winter vacation. Winter in Europe and the UK, Scotland where I was, is very different to the winters that I'm used to here in Australia. So I'm going to have a video linked. If you haven't seen it, I will have it linked up above and down below. We're basically, I shared with you the outfits that I planned for my trip. I spent months, months planning out these outfits and I think it paid off. There were some that I didn't wear and I'll talk, I'll talk through why. Oh, hello. Come here. Oh, yeah, hi, friend, baby. Say hello to your friends, please. Say hello to your friends. Please don't ruin my white dress. You're gonna sit here with us? They can just see your ear, honey. They can't see your face. Now, the next thing I'm gonna tell you, you gotta truly understand how absolutely insane I am and like how much I prepared for this trip. I bought 35 packs. <laughs> This took up a very large chunk of my, my suitcase, by the way. <laughs> five weeks worth, which is about 35 packs of body, hand and feet warmers, okay? My boyfriend was like, you are insane. And I was just like, you knew, you knew this when you met me, okay? Don't act like you're trapped. Don't act like I trapped you into this. You knew I was crazy when you met me. Um, and it turns out he was actually right. He was telling me I didn't need them. I was crazy. I was going overboard. He told me I didn't need them. Um, and he was he was right, okay, he was right. I didn't need them. I mean, I kind of did, but I actually didn't like to use them. It sounds really, I know it sounds weird, but I didn't like to use them. I used a few of the hand warmers, like I think probably maybe like four packs of hand warmers, but I mainly just rely, relied on my gloves, which I love. The gloves were amazing. They kept my hands so warm and toasty. One of the best purchases I could have bought on that trip. But the hand warmers, I mean, I carried them like a few days, but most time that my gloves were sufficient. The feet foot warmers, I didn't, I didn't like them. I just found them weird. Like I didn't like the, I don't know. I just felt weird. It made my feet feel weird. The cold made my feet feel numb, but then sometimes having that much heat on them as well made them feel really weird. With how they made my feet feel, I didn't even want to try the body warmers. It just, the whole thing kind of freaked me out to be honest. And I was reading the back of the packages with the warning labels and I was like, ah, and that just like freaked me out. So I just, I didn't, I, I just went without them. I didn't use them. The infamous condom head beanie and this black one. I wore them. So in, when I was in Scotland, I did actually come down with a really bad flu and I wore these most of, most of the days that I was really sick. We were outside a lot, you know, when we, we were like going to Edinburgh Castle, when I was going for walks, um, it was so cold for me there. And partly because I was so tired, run down, exhausted, I felt so ill. I just completely had given up on the way I looked. So a lot of the images, a lot of the photos of me in Scotland, I was not wearing makeup. I was just like, no, I feel like death warmed up. Let's just not even pretend that I don't. So I was pretty much just not wearing makeup and I wasn't even doing my hair and I just had beanies on. These were a real lifesaver for me. I greatly underestimated how much warmth you hold here in this head. With these beanies on, my I was so much warmer and I greatly underestimated the power of the beanies, okay? I felt ugly, I felt ridiculous but they were so, so worth it. Another thing that I basically wore every day of that trip, like every, hello, my love job. Every single, shh, mommy's talking to her friends, okay? I basically wore this almost every day. There was a bit of a patch there in Italy where it was really nice weather and I didn't need it, but like I basically did not leave the house without this. I wore it all day, every day. It was a lifesaver for me. A woolen scarf, a great thick one, can't go wrong. Uh, I did bring my Burberry scarf as well, but I just, I wore that one pretty much the whole time. My boyfriend wore the Burberry scarf. The Burberry scarf just wasn't as warm for me. I really love that nice, thick, chunky woolen scarf. I bought my Hermes boots. I wore these shoes once, once in five weeks. And that was for Christmas day. This was like my Christmas day outfit. This one here was my Christmas day outfit. But other than that, I did not wear this, these, these boots or this outfit here. I only wore it once and that was Christmas day. Um, and that was mainly, actually no, I wore this the night I arrived as well. We went out for dinner the night we got to Scotland. I was so jet lagged. I don't know what I was thinking. I just wanted to look pretty. Um, no, it was just way too cold. Like this was not enough for me. I went out a few nights with some of um, 
some of my my partner's friends' girlfriends, and they were wearing like dresses and open toe open toe shoes, okay? I don't think I saw my toes the entire trip. <laughs> I was pretty much wearing socks and shoes all like the whole time. I did not see my feet except for when I was in the shower that whole trip. These were not keeping me, these weren't warm enough, okay? My feet were numb. Even the first night, we went out for dinner with his family, the first night we got there, I was wearing these. I was in a restaurant and I'm thinking, oh, you know, it'll be warm in the restaurant, it'll be warm. I was near the radiator, but I was still freezing, okay? My feet, I could not feel my feet the entire like meal. It was crazy. I'm like, what is happening? This is, it was, I was freezing. I was wearing my coat, I was wearing everything. I was so cold. Um, my Wolford tights that I love, and I'll be wearing them here in my Australian winters. Those are really great tights, but again, didn't wear them that much. I, I don't, I think I wore them once, twice. The first night I got there, and then I learnt my lesson real quick, and then I wore them Christmas Day with this outfit. And the reason I wore them Christmas Day was because we spent all day inside. I couldn't wear these in Italy, not on those cobblestone streets, not after, you know, doing 20, 30,000 steps all day. The last thing I wanted to do was put on a heel, so these basically went untouched. This as well basically went untouched, this bag. I wore it twice out to dinner, but other than that, I didn't reach for this bag because my intended, you know, usage of this bag was to go with these outfits but I wasn't wearing these outfits they I was it just wasn't enough layers you know my Uniqlo thermals which I want to again say thank you so much to for you who recommended Uniqlo thermals I had so many recommendations for really great brands for thermals I went with Uniqlo just because it was easy for me to get my hands on they were amazing I wore them and I lived in them every day I was basically wearing my my thermals um, under my jeans my my top like the thermals really made such a big difference so thank you so much and that's one thing i will be implementing into my australian winters i always thought you know it wasn't cold enough here to be wearing thermals i will be wearing thermals here life changing stuff this bag i also found i wore but not as much as my YSL, which i'm going to get into but this bag did come in handy while i was away i wore it out to a few dinners like a few casual dinners i also wore it a few days out and about exploring but i found that this, this sounds weird a small percentage of people maybe i understand this a lot of you might think I'm crazy and you might not know what this feels like, but I did wear this out to dinner a bit and I wore this for more like my shorter days out. When I was wearing my Canada Goose jacket with my big chunky scarf and I was trying to wear this crossbody, I've never had this in Australia actually. I've never had this issue, um, but I did find that wearing this big chunky scarf, that big chunky coat, trying to wear this crossbody, I think on top of as well, I have a lot of like, not a lot, but like my neck and back and shoulders. I do go to a chiropractor regularly. I do get regular-ish massages because I do hold a lot of tension here. And in the winter, it tends to be a lot worse because like, because of the cold, I'm just very much like <gasps> breathing. And I think um, I didn't really get to have those same chiropractic treatments or those as, as regular and as good massages as what I'm used to here at home. My neck and my back, I did have a bit of trouble with it. Like there were some days where I just had to take painkillers because I just had so much like built up neck and back tension and trying to wear heavy scarves and heavy layers with like a crossbody bag that's kind of like putting on that extra tension, it did cause my neck and back to ache a little bit. Um, and I found that this was a bit of a harder bag to kind of carry just over one shoulder with all my big layers. It may not make sense, but some of you may know what I'm talking about. Like if you've got like a lot of neck and back built up tension and then you try to wear like a crossbody bag, it can, it can like it, it can really add that extra tension. So I didn't wear this as much as I I wore my YSL bag, but I definitely did still wear it. I probably wore this bag maybe like 30% of the time. I was away for five weeks. It was more maybe my going out to dinner bag, or if we weren't going out all day and I didn't need to carry a lot of stuff, or on the days that my neck and back were feeling better, this was the bag that I reached for. Um, but truly the shining star of this trip was my my YSL and I have had a few people ask about how this bag held up and honestly hands down like best purchase that I've made in a really long time. I wore this a lot more because like I was mentioning that that kind of those shoulder and back issues I could eat more easily wear this on one side of my body without it causing me as much pain. I also found it a lot easier just to kind of hold the straps and just kind of carry it when I was feeling a lot of tension here. Um, and you know, this bag again went with a lot of my outfits as you, as you can see in the cutaways that I've shared and it had just so much room. Like it had so much room for my things. I could also link my gloves around, around the straps. Um, 
and you know I wore this in the pouring rain I wore this I couldn't wear my Louis Vuitton I mean you can but you got to be obviously careful about the vachetta and just general I don't I didn't I didn't feel as comfortable getting that saturatedly soaked this bag got soaked like if you know Scotland you know Scotland rains a lot like this bag got soaked and I didn't need to worry I didn't need to be as precious with it whereas my Louis Vuitton bag if it would rain I felt like I had to take my my Canada goose off and then I had to put my Louis Vuitton underneath and then put the Canada goose on top so I'd protect it this bag did not need protecting okay she can hold her own she can hold her own honestly there's no wear on this bag there is absolutely nowhere on this bag. I didn't need to baby it. I didn't need to worry about getting it wet. So if you need a travel bag, but you still want to carry like a nice, good quality designer brand, this. Now I want to get to my shoes because these, these were the best thing I think I could have ever bought. And shout out to the person. I don't remember your name, but you are amazing. The day that I read your comment, you, you someone left a comment telling me that these little red things flip up and I almost, I, I remember I saw this little hook and I'm like, what the this for? And I was about to throw it out. It was literally in the bin. And as soon as I saw your comment, I ran to the bin, dug it out the bin. I'm so glad you told me because I wouldn't have known. Um, these little red things flip up. I mean, I did it with my nail, but you better use like the hook thing. Game changer game changing product and it kind of helps so you don't slip on the ice and it just provides a lot more grip which i really needed in scotland because those streets okay they're icy they're slippery that is something i've never felt here in, at home before so this really um came in handy for me these these boots and these were truly a godsend if you are going on a european adventure and you have really cold feet or if you're especially going to the snow i'm so glad i bought these like i'm not going to wear them much here in australia but if I ever, when I go to the snow and when I next go to on a wintry vacation, I, I will be bringing these with me because they were truly like one of the hands down the best buy. They're completely lined. Like my feet were cold, but not as cold as I knew that they would be if I didn't have these all lined. Like these with my cashmere socks, they really did help a lot. Like don't be wrong, sometimes my toes were still a bit numb, but they really worked wonders um however when i did get to italy i didn't i didn't actually need these i think i just i, I just i weirdly just assumed that it would be as cold as it was in scotland and italy no italy was very warm okay the sun was out and i couldn't wear these i was sweating i bought my common projects with me on my trip as well but i stupidly just left them in scotland because i didn't think i would need them and i was trying to pack light and look this is where it gets me so while i was in italy i actually had to buy a pair of white sneakers i just went with um some Air Force Ones, just something really simple, basic, because I just want something that I knew was comfortable and I knew would go with everything. I wore these every day in Italy, basically. So I'm gonna round off with the rest of the outfits that I shared with you that I had planned. This particular one here, again, I wore a lot. Like I wore this outfit a lot. This Lily Silk uh, cashmere sweater as well. I love this, I love this sweater and I wore it probably more than my other ones because I felt like, this one was probably my favorite one I wore because it didn't get as creased, like I could, you know, take this off, crumple it up, throw it in the corner, throw it back in my suitcase, and it just weirdly held its shape a lot better. It didn't get as crinkled, and I really loved that. Um, I found I didn't need to iron this one as much. It was like one less thing I didn't have to worry about ironing my sweater. So that's why I'd reach for this one a lot, because I didn't need to worry about ironing it. It was just, it was always crinkle free. Obviously as well, that Canada Goose wore it to death. Funnily, the Lily Silk ones, the red one, I didn't really wear that. I only really wore it on Christmas Day um, and maybe like one or two other times. But again, in Scotland, I just found it was way too cold for it, even with thermals underneath and my Canada Goose and my scarf. I felt like it was, it was, I was way too cold. I needed something a lot thicker. So it didn't really, I didn't really get a lot of wear out of that. This particular sweater here, this outfit combination, again, I wore a ton. This was another sweater similar to the Lily Silk one. I felt that this was another sweater that held its shape really well. This outfit combination actually was one that I wore quite a bit. This sweater though in particular, I loved that I didn't have to worry about ironing it. Similar to the Lily Silk cashmere one, I didn't have to worry about ironing it. I could like crumple it up, throw it. I think I probably got it dry cleaned like once, but 
it held up really well. This one, this creamy, lighter coloured lily silk, I actually did wear this quite a bit in Italy with my Air Force Ones because, again, it was just such a big contrast between Italy and Scotland. I found I was really, really cold in Scotland. I needed thermals. I needed, like, two layers and then, and then a really chunky sweater and then a really, really heavy coat. When I went to Italy, I, I didn't feel that as much. I just... This was more than enough. Like, this with my Canada Goose. I probably had my Canada Goose jacket on for, like, you know, maybe an hour in the morning or when it got a bit colder at night. But I found that this lighter fabric was more than enough for Italy because it was such a beautiful mild like the sun was out it was very nice warm weather in Italy this sweater as well I love this this is more like my fancy because I didn't wear my my sweater dresses that much this was really a lot more of the the sweater that I wore when I was going out for dinner or when I was trying to like look a bit nicer a little bit fancier if you will and it was also just a sweater that I wore a lot in general the one thing that I did find with this though was it was very warm but I tended to gravitate to the other ones more because this I just had to steam it every single time I wanted to wear it. Also this Lily Silk hoodie, I wore that on the plane over and I wore it on most of my plane trips or you know when we'd get home from a big day and I didn't, it was, it was like too early to put on my pajamas but I still didn't want to be in jeans so that's kind of what I used those for. I didn't really wear them out too much. I didn't reach for this outfit that much this kind of black number there was probably a few days that i wore it but definitely not as much as i thought i would i think i just wanted to put on a lot more color i was really i was really craving a lot more colored clothing this knit is from the row and it's just a lot thinner uh, and also those spanx i did wear them a few times as well those like velour style spanx just there were some days where i just couldn't be bothered putting on jeans and i just wanted to be wearing tights and feel comfortable and i actually could manage as well to put a layer of thermals underneath those and then them on top and i it was definitely a lot thicker and a lot warmer so yeah I, i'm really proud with the outfits that i packed and i definitely didn't feel like i overpacked too much i really hope you enjoyed today's video and i hope it gave you some inspiration oh look Flinny's trying to Flinny, can you stop trying to lick your bits please you're on camera <coughs> You just want all the attention, don't you? You want all the attention. You want everything to be about you. I hope I managed to answer any of your questions and if I didn't, feel free to leave in the comments down below and I'll be sure to answer those. I hope this video provided you with some inspiration or maybe some help on how to pack for more of a wintry vacation, especially if you go to the UK or Europe and maybe you're like someone like me from a warmer climate. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Um, I'll have another one linked to you right here. <laughs> uh, if you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to check out that one there. Thank you so much for joining us. Us? Yes, you were here too, weren't you? You were scratching your bits and making funny noises. Um, thank you for joining us in today's video, uh, and I'll see you in my next one. Hi! You are annoying. You are mummy's baby. Yes. Love you. You just want cuddles. That's all you wanted, didn't you? You just wanted some love. <laughs>